Hello and welcome back to Felpos Sunday here on the World War II History and Reenacting YouTube channel. It's finally Sunday again and it's time to see if there's any Felpos. Are you ready? Three, two, one. We have a Felpost. Perfect. I really like letters. They're fun because... Let's see. Can I find my Puko here? Where did you go? Puko. Ah. All right. Hey, you got some postcards. Let's send this out. <laughs> Always rip it apart to see if everything is empty. All right. So what have we got here? Some photos, of course. Original photos. We have two photos. Oh, nice. Some really nice ones. Again, these are related to the field kitchen, to the German field kitchen. So bear with me. But these are really cool. All right, let's take a closer look at the first photograph. It's a nice crisp image with a nice composition of an interesting motive. There is a lot going on here and I can spot many nice details, which is very exciting. First of all, we have the German field kitchen. This is the early or standard version of the large field kitchen model HF13. Later versions from mid to late war generally came with an additional roasting compartment, which replaced the majority of the storage compartments on the one side. Some early versions were also later upgraded with the roasting device feature. Note that the field kitchen in this photograph also has the large wooden wheels, which together with the foldable smokestack help give the field kitchen its nickname Goulash Kanone or Goulash Cannon. So this must be the field cook or one of the field cook helpers. And no, <laughs> he's not three meters tall, in case you wondered. He's actually standing on what some say is the field kitchen's rack for placing hot food carriers when filling them. I like to just call it the field kitchen step. Its purpose or function is widely debated, but I see more field cooks standing on it than placing items on it. Its intended purpose might have been for food carriers, but you know how it is. Then we have the three musketeers, all of them from the German Luftwaffe or Air Force. They are seemingly enjoying a hot meal from the field kitchen. There is also a guy sitting on the front hitch of the field kitchen, maybe in order to support the weight of the field cook standing on the field kitchen step. And last but not least, there is another guy, down in the left-hand corner, almost out of the frame. He's apparently eating, judging by the placement of his hands. We can see that the field kitchen's main food kettle lid is open and secured in place with the locking mechanism, which looks like this. With the lid open, it means that the field cook is in the process of either preparing food, serving food, cleaning, or simply just staring down into the empty kettle thinking, Oh dear, I guess I didn't make enough. The field kitchen itself appears to be in beautiful condition and is either well kept or fairly new, or a combination of both. We can also see that the lid for compartment number 9 is open and we can clearly see the top part of the hopper for the coffee grinder. I'm not entirely sure what this is, but it could look like a pack of smokes or something similar. This photograph gives a nice insight into the different cooking utensils and accessories that were used by the field cook. The most recognizable item, of course, is the standard issue field kitchen stirring paddle. If you want to know more about this item, I made an in-depth video on the subject a little while ago, on a different Felpost Sunday episode, which also features the previously mentioned coffee grinder. I will leave a link to the video down in the video description below. One of the six standard issue aluminium serving plates 
issued with every large field kitchen. This is not a standard issue item, but fairly common to see in the field cook's arsenal, a whisker, which has apparently recently been used. It's placed in an empty can, but unfortunately the label is practically unreadable, but it's some kind of canned food. It could possibly be canned milk or something similar, with regards to the white cream-like residue on the whisker, maybe it's something for dessert, or perhaps a sauce. This small wooden spatula is to my knowledge also not a standard issue item with the German field kitchen, but the two frying pans are definitely of the military issue type and style. Here are some more details. The lower door to compartment number 11 is slightly open. This compartment contained burning material and a coal shovel. The red colored reflector, known as cat eyes, plural, was used to alert especially other vehicles in a column situation and to tell them, please don't crash into me. The instruction plaque on how to operate the coffee kettle. The coffee kettle spigot, which was of course connected to the coffee kettle. The firebox door and handle for the coffee kettle. Note that the ashtray for the coffee kettle firebox is in its lowered position meaning that the coffee kettle was probably used recently or is in fact in use at this moment. The hand crank for setting the brakes is also barely visible, behind this guy's head. Also note the wedding ring on the field cook. Now let's take a closer look at the three musketeers. They certainly appear to be having a good time while enjoying their meal. At least two of them are non-commissioned officers by looking at their uniform insignia, and one outranks the other. All of them appear to be from the Luftwaffe, but the third is wearing a work uniform. Maybe he is actually the field cook. But what branch of the Luftwaffe they belong to is hard to tell. Here one can also see a close-up of the field kitchen wheel brakes. There is a piece of what appears to be a large cut of pork meat sitting on a round cutting board on the table Maybe it's going into the field kitchen next. Laying next to it is one of the large standard issue kitchen knives which was stored in compartment number 12 of the field kitchen. On second thoughts, the large piece of meat could actually just be a ugly cake. <laughs> what do you think? Well, since they are already eating, my guess is that this pork roast or cut of meat is probably already cooked and then cut into slices for serving. They are eating from two of the standard issue plates from the field kitchen, like the one we saw earlier. And they are probably also using the sporks issued with the field kitchen. Note the half-eaten apple sitting on the table, and the wedding ring on this soldier's finger. Now let's take a close look at the second photograph, which is presumably from the same soldier showing the same field kitchen. The Luftwaffe unit is apparently on the move, and it looks like they are in the process of either boarding a ship or offloading equipment. Note that although this field kitchen is considered a horse-drawn model because of the wooden wheels, it appears to be towed by a truck, at least in this photo. This guy is either tasting something with a small spoon or treating himself a cigarette. In the background, one can clearly see the main field kitchen instruction plaque. At least, this tall Luftwaffe soldier appears to be smoking. A close-up of a soldier's mess tin and a large pot or bucket. It's probably one of the two field kitchen standard issue buckets, but it's hard to say 100% without seeing the handle. At least a truck is filled with enough supplies. There is smoke coming out of the smokestack. I guess there's something cooking. In the background, one can clearly see the ships in the harbor. My guess is that these photographs are either pre or early war. Well, that was two nice original photographs of the German field kitchen in use. I really, really enjoy this. So I hope you did as well because that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching and until next Sunday, auf Wiedersehen.
perfect.